How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Garage Time. Today we're going to do more work on the heads and I'm not going to bore you guys with the same mumbo jumbo from last week. I finished the heads, at least I hope I finished the heads. I'm going to devise a method today to pressure test the valve seats and the valves and make sure that it's sealing as they should and also going to be measuring the combustion chamber volume so we can calculate the compression ratio before we slap these on the engine and hopefully get it started up maybe next week. Garage time. Got this head reassembled uh, temporarily. It's not fully cleaned, it's not fully prepped. Now, the conventional way to bench test heads is to use vacuum. And you typically just suck on either the exhaust port or the intake port and you measure the pressure. And I don't, I have a vacuum gauge, but I don't have a vacuum pump that's really the right level to get any meaningful results. So what I thought I would do is I do have a leak down tester and that's a more um, appreciated, more diagnostic kind of understood tool to measure the condition of an engine. And now I'm just gonna weld this plate on it. The cylinder hasn't been this hot in years. I'm just using the actual head bolts here to attach that cylinder. Okay, I'm not going to do a full torque on these. Uh, I'm going to pressurize it and see if it's leaking at all. Um, this is not the cylinder I'm going to be using, so I don't want to. I don't want to mark the heads in any ways. But this is light torque. There's no way it's going to damage the head surface. So here we go. I like to do compression tests at 80 psi. I think this is what the FAA recommends. For engines most people just go to 100 but that just makes the math easier i'm getting you know 80 on this gauge and basically a little more on this gauge probably just the gauge differences but i'm getting 80 and 80 which is zero leak down i couldn't be happier i mean that's you can't get any better than that even though i can hear some leaks yeah i hear a little tiny leak coming from the intake port which is to be expected. I mean, it's just metal to metal contact dry. Can you guys hear that? So I pull away. I don't hear anything coming out of the exhaust side. I, I think there's a little bit of air coming out of the weld right here. Okay, so that's, that's one leak, but apparently it's pretty small because it's not even registering on the gauge here. The way this test is set up, it's expected to leak. Anything less than 10% is good. 10% would be, you know, this at about 60 or, you know, 72 or something. So that's awesome. What do you think? Should I go in the head rebuilding business? Just kidding. Don't send me your heads. I spent way too much time on these. Okay, I should also mention that 10% leak down is for a complete engine. That includes the piston rings. That Piston rings are pretty much the only thing I'm not testing here because I'm testing the head seal. 
I'm testing the valve seals and that's really what contributes to leak down. I kind of like to fix this weld. I don't know where it's leaking from because it's hard to see with the plate on top. I thought I did a good job on this, but apparently not. These cylinder sealing services look really nice. I did clean them up a tad, but uh, I don't think these need to be machined. So here's a quick discussion on valve lapping. So valve lapping can be good. It can reduce or eliminate any sort of chatter marks due to the tool, whether it's a CNC machine or my hand turned crank. Sometimes you get little tooling marks in the seat and you wanna remove that. Now, there's different kinds of paste and I think there's a big disparity here. I have this stuff, which is, this is the stuff I used for the link pins and it's really coarse. The coarse is like rocks and the fine is not that fine. So what I'm using for this stuff, which is more precision, and this is 400 grit, it's called super fine or ultra fine. This is important for me because I've created precise geometry with the new way cutters. You know, it's a 46 degree cut, it's a 70 degree cut and a 15. And I don't wanna use the lapping compound to, to gouge or dish any of those surfaces. All I wanna do is remove the chatter marks. So I'm using this fine compound just to smooth out the surface and put a nice finish on it. I'm not gonna change the geometry with this compound. And that's really important because as this thing heats up, you're gonna rely on that geometry to maintain a seal. So if you lap it in at a room temperature situation, maybe it'll seal at room temperature, but the minute things expand and you move off of that lapped surface, then it's gonna leak. So that's why I use the 400 grit compound. It's technically you're still lapping, but it's so fine, you're not really removing any material or changing the shape. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, lapping valves is something that most people don't do anymore because CNC machines and all the valve cutting equipment has gotten so much better. The chatter marks are kind of a thing of the past, but because I did mine by hand, I took the most precautions I could. Another benefit of this 400 uh, grit lapping compound is it puts a little gray band on the valve. I don't know if you can tell on this video picture here, but this one has a, a little gray band. You can tell exactly where the valve is making contact with the seat. That's really important for you know flow and reliability and longevity. So I like the lapping compound, but don't use this stuff you get at the hardware store or automotive store that's called valve lapping compound. This stuff is not good for your engine at all. I got lucky again, 82 and 82, exactly. Uh, let's see, I don't hear as much sound of air. Let me set this aside. I don't hear any air coming from the valve on this side. There's still air coming out of this. It's a little air coming from that fitting too. This is awesome, you guys, when most of your leak down is, is coming from the actual tester that needs a little bit of thread sealant on these. This is a NPT thread, so it needs either to be tighter or maybe just a little bit of sealant, I don't know. This side, in my opinion, is even better than the other side. I have nothing leaking here at the head to cylinder junction. I have, I can't hear anything coming from either of the valves. And then there's this leak down here of my, of my test setup. Pass the tests, uh, thumbs up. Oh, look at that. It's like a little engine. So I'm just trying to figure out where this is leaking from. Oh, look, there's two spots right there. Yeah, it's leaking in multiple spots. It's actually, it's hard to weld cast iron. <laughs> so this is the spot I tried to fix. Here you can see I'm just holding it with my hands and I, I reduced the pressure here to 40 but it's leaking so much at this point with just hand pressure, it's zero on this side. So the leak down tester works, 
there it's just leaking you know between the cylinder head and the cylinder because it's not torqued down at all the last thing to measure on these heads is the combustion chamber size now it is stamped on here 61.5 it's got a little little number from the factory but every time you change the valve geometry or sync the valves or adjust the valve seats it can change the combustion chamber and who knows if these heads have been cut around the perimeter where the cylinder meets the head. So it's always good to double check that number and make sure you understand what it is before you assemble your engine and just guess on the compression ratio. Look at the dust on this thing. Haven't used this in a while. Now this one only goes to 50 cc's and the cylinder heads are probably more than that. So I'll have to do it in steps. If this measurement process isn't that hard. You just need a clear plate. This is plexiglass or Lexan, and I have two holes in it, one to enter the fluid, one for the air to escape. And I wrote on here top. I guess I just want to do it the same every time. I've had this a while. It fits inside here. And then this is a graduated cylinder, and I just like to use, uh, you can use any fluid. I'm using Windex. This is like the dollar store version of Windex. So I'm just gonna fill it up and see how it measures. The cylinder's full of Windex, but I don't like this right here. This has got, you know, so many bubbles on top, you can't, you can't read it and it's not, it's not really great. So I think I'm gonna switch gears and use something else like automatic trans fluid. Okay, this is automatic trans fluid and you can still see it, it does have bubbles in it. Hopefully, see those bubbles traveling to the top? So you just wanna wait for all those bubbles to get out so that you have a good solid stream of fluid. Okay, we're about ready here to fill up the head with this fluid and I just wanted to show you that I've opened the valve and let some fluid flow. So there's fluid all the way to the tip. This is part of the calibration, so you don't wanna leave this empty. And the top is showing zero right at the, uh, they call it the meniscus line. So I'm gonna go ahead and dump the majority of the fluid in and then we'll do the fine measurement after we fill it up with at least 50 cc's. Big mistake, I forgot to put the spark plug in. So the fluid would just come right out. Oops. It's been about 20 minutes and none of the trans fluid leaked out, which is a good sign. I'll probably do this measurement twice just in case there's some drops I can't see. Okay, while the bubbles are settling out of the pipette, I'm gonna put a little bit of Vaseline on this plate so that the liquid stays put. It's a very thin amount of Vaseline there. There, that fits nice. So now uh, we'll fill it up some more. Okay, it's just starting to make contact with the plate right here. Let me show you guys. Can you see how it's contacting the plate? Making that shape. I'm just adjusting this hole position because it looks like it wants to be right there. Okay, hopefully you can see there, all the bubbles are out and there is a meniscus there on the bottom of that hole and a, a, a tiny, it looks like it's a depression right at the bottom of that hole. You could probably put one more drop in, but there's, you know, this is a pretty good measurement so far. And then you can see on the perimeter how the metal is still shiny. So none of the fluid is leaking into the ceiling area. This is only measuring the combustion chamber. And so this is looking really nice. Let's read the measurement. Of about 63, which is pretty big, I'm gonna do a little research and make sure that that's uh, within the range. 63 is on the high range. I mean, this was stamped 61.5 and the subsequent valve jobs probably lowered the valve some, so it, it makes sense. I think the factory range is 62. I don't think 63 is gonna be a big issue, but I'm gonna measure again just to make sure there's no errors.
Okay, round two without a long pause in the middle. I did clean this out pretty well with compressed air and all the residual fluid has been wiped up with a towel. So let's see what the second time gets. Okay, probably hard to see on camera, but I got a little fluid here on top of the plate, which is a no-no. So this is a voided measurement. Uh, the numbers came in higher, uh, 64, but I think there's probably, you know, one or two cc's just sitting on top of the plate. Every drop is about a half a cc, about, to, about one cc. So these drops do matter, and um, I just didn't go slow enough at the end. That one took a little while to get the bubble out, but I got all the bubbles out and that one ended up being 63.6 again. I've measured those combustion volumes a few times and sort of averaged the results. I'm somewhere, I think on one side, 63.2, the other 63.4. So I quickly checked some compression calculators online and for my pistons and geometry, I mean, I can adjust the deck height with with the base cylinder gaskets, it's somewhere around 8.5 to one, which is stock. And that's fine, this is not a performance engine. So I'm happy with eight and a half to one. It should last a long time too. Speaking of performance, I didn't talk too much about the head and performance modifications to the head, but I will say that the valve seat geometry and the valve opening, that's the bottleneck in the heads. You know, a lot of people just port out the heads and enlarge them and make them bigger. But if you don't do the valve angles on the seat, you're completely missing the boat. Um, all the restriction comes in when that valve, even a partial opening, all the air has to rush through that little sliver of space when the valve opens and closes. And if those angles aren't correct, uh, like I spent a lot of time at least making the three angle valve job correct, uh, you can go to infinity on that. Most of the prime engine builders are spending their time on the valve seat design and the open area of the valve. That's how, that's the bottleneck. And I didn't do it on this engine, but I think I did a better job than the previous guy. The previous guy to rebuild it pretty much just cut the 45 degree. It was a single angle valve job. There was very little left of the 15 degree angle and the 75 degree angle. 
which means there's huge obstruction as the air rolls past that sharp 45 degree angle. It's going to stumble and tumble and it's, it's going to restrict itself. I mean, it's, it's really a poor job, I thought. So at least I think I've done better than the last guy on these heads, even though it's complete DIY. Really happy with the leak down numbers and all the surface finish, all the clearance on the valve guides. I mean, I've spent some time on it and I learned a lot. It's really been a fun project working on these heads. But it's really going to be fun if we get it started. No promises for next week, but I'm motivated. I want to get this thing running really soon. So check back next week. Mm -hmm.